Welcome back everybody. Today I'm going to give you a shop tour on my small little operation here. I work right out of my garage. Um, it's probably been a while since you guys have seen what's going on with everything around here. Uh, so I'll give you a little tour. I got new equipment in here. Uh, upgraded a lot of stuff. Right behind the camera there's actually some product for a customer. Alright, first things first. I got this Frankenstein machine I've been building here. Completely rebuilt. Spray can special. Anyways, this is my line bore machine I'm working on. I know it doesn't look like much right now, but I basically took an old drill press. Oh, this sun is horrible. I don't know if that's better. But anyways, I took a drill press, mounted it at like a 15 degree angle, and I'm in the process of hooking up all the pneumatics with the foot pedal down there. So this will be pretty nice to have when, once it's all done. Uh, I ordered some parts and hoses for this, um, and I think I ordered a new uh, switch for it, foot pedal switch. One piece of machinery I think any cabinet shop, any woodworker needs is a sliding table saw. This is a SCM Minimax. It runs a 10 inch blade on it. It's a single phase uh, 240 volt. Great machine. It's got an eight foot slide in each direction. So a total of like 16 feet of travel. It's a pretty slick machine. The next machine I wanna show you is this Conquest line bore machine. This one I got from my dad, um, from his company. And it's a retired machine. They don't use it anymore. It was actually one of the original line bore machines from his company when he worked out of the garage. So it only makes sense to put it in my garage. Anyways, this thing is wrecked. It's been sitting in the sun for, gosh, probably 10 years. All the push connection fittings and hoses are all broken and brittle. I mean, look at that. It just falls apart in your hand like, like it's nothing. So I gotta change it all out. Also, this machine is a three phase machine. It's got dual motor on it. This is a big boy. So I gotta first, well, first of all, I gotta lube this thing up. This thing is just rustier than Mater. I mean, it needs a lot of, a lot of work. But yeah, I mean, once this thing is all fired up, I can adjust all these here to what, how, what the spacing is for whatever I want between my line bore. And I just slap the cabinet parts in there and hit a foot pedal and uh, away she goes. So this is my drill press. This is a good machine. Runs great. Best score I've ever found in someone's driveway for like free stuff. Over here in this corner, I have my Blum hinge machine. You got your your clamps, your pneumatic clamps here, and you got your also your bits for press in hinges. So basically just stick your part in there, you hit go and it comes down and bores out everything you want to see. You can actually see the, uh, let me stick you in there. You can kind of see the pattern it does. So once it drills that in the back of the door, I can just hammer in a hinge. I don't have to mess with a screw gun or anything. This thing is worth its weight in gold when it comes to production. Over here, we got my tool rack. Nothing too fancy. I mean, I'm just, I'm a Makita guy. I've always been heavily invested in Makita. I mean, I, if I had a choice and all the money in the world, I would probably go with Milwaukee. I really do like Milwaukee, but I'm not rich. So I went with the next best thing and that's Makita. And then right here, right next to all my Makita tools, I got my little chop saw here. Gets the job done. It's not a 12 inch. It's a, I believe a, gosh, I might not even be a 10 inch. It's a little guy, but it's really just for cutting face frames and little sticks and stuff. I really don't need a big saw in here. Um, and if I do, I got in my service truck over there, I got my big 12 inch chop saw um, that can pretty much cut anything. All right, and we'll swing around over here. Got my lumber rack. Of course, you gotta have the boom booms up there. Yeah. But anyways, got my lumber rack. I got all my sheet goods in there. Uh, scrap pieces of lumber. I hardly throw anything away. Uh, I'm kind of a kind of a material hoarder. 
I like having material around so I don't have to go buy stuff. All right, speaking of the service truck, here's my rig. I'm sure you guys have probably seen it around town. But yeah, this truck, it's a 2003 uh, GMC Sierra Duramax. Great truck, it's got a lot of miles. It's got like 260,000, um, but she runs great. Four door, it's fully loaded. Um, it had a regular dually bed on the back and I ended up putting this uh, utility bed on here. It was a old Cal Fire, uh, Cal Fire bed. It was all red, the white stripe. So I sanded her all down, bought some uh, factory paint. The, uh, I believe it's called Summit White. I think it's what GM calls it. But anyways, kind of just painted that up and got some stickers put on it. And she's been working great ever since. And then of course, gotta have a forklift. Forklift is awesome. Whether you're lifting units of material or replacing a motor um, or bringing home random junk like this fireplace. It's actually a, a fireplace out of uh, my childhood home over at my parents' house. They were getting rid of it, so I would hate to see it go in the, the, go in the, uh, the dumps, so. I went ahead and just took it off their hands and I plan on hooking that up in the shop one day. Over here, I just picked up this dust collector, actually from the same guy I purchased the, the uh, table saw, the sliding table saw over there, that SCM. Um, I picked this dust collector up from him. This, I believe it's a, what does it say? It is a, well, it doesn't give the horsepower, but I want to say he said it was like a two horse. Um, 110 volt let's see actually you know what I bet you the motor says let's see um, no it doesn't say but anyways you can take my word for it I think it's like a two horse um, I've already plugged it in it works great um, I obviously don't have it hooked up quite yet because I'm still in the process of kind of doing up the shop recently I kind of redid everything once I brought this table saw in here so I'm gonna run the dust collection behind the shop and I'm gonna run I just have six inch tube I'm gonna run six inch tube through the walls and just come out here and have drops coming down and of course the workbench um, this thing I just slapped together actually today so it's nice to have a little somewhere to, to build something so you're not you know, putting stuff on your saw, like I do right here and over there. That's kind of a no-no. Um, anyways, it's nice to have a workbench. This is just simply uh, pre-finished maple I had in my rack and some white melamine. Edge banded it. Makes a great little workbench. Um, it's 30 inches tall. Anyways, that does it for the shop tour here. It's really not much. I mean, seriously, it's just like a two-car garage plans on doing an addition for the house and when I do that for the house I'm gonna actually bump this shop out probably right to the back of the truck there like another 15 feet or so and it should give me a, enough room to fit some more toys in here but anyways uh, enough jibber jabbing um, I want to show you guys a couple things on I don't know how to build something I guess what should we build we should you know what on my honeydew list, I have a shoe rack I need to build. So maybe I'll film that. All right. Here I got some shelves that I made. Um, they were just anchored into the, in the studs of sheetrock. Didn't end up really using them. So I think they're gonna make a perfect material for the shoe rack. Um, I think also we're going to use half inch uh, pre-finished maple for the interiors and then these will just be like the skins that make it look rustic so anyways let's uh let's get into this all these off all right all right so now that we got all these popped off i'll just put these to the side for a future project because i don't know if you guys have ever bought any sprinkler pipe fittings and stuff, but man, they're expensive. 
You wouldn't think sprinkler pipe would be expensive, but it is. Anyways, okay, so I already have a predetermined uh, size in my head, my noggin. So I think I'm gonna do like 42 inches tall, um, maybe like seven inches deep, and probably about 22, 25 inches wide. I don't know. I'm just gonna make it up as I go. Now that we got our two side pieces here, I'll try and get rid of that line in there later. They're gonna be about, it's gonna be about this high, the shoe rack, and I think it's gonna be probably around 25 inches, something like that. Um, and just have some slanted shelves in it. But yeah, like I said, these will be the outsides, so we'll put these on last. So now that we got these cut, uh, we're going to cut them to length with 42 inches um, on two legs, we have two of them there because the yield is horrible. Um, and then I should be able to get like three shelves out of this um, and connect them all together and we'll slap on our fancy little side parts there and uh, maybe put a little clear coat on it. Yeah, my shop is a mess right now because I'm in the middle. Like I said earlier, setting up this new saw and everything. So everything got disheveled. Like all my clamps, for instance, over here are not in a home. So the overall view, the next project is uh, maybe making some type of clamp cart. I don't know, or some type of just clamp rack. the liberty of cutting this little wedge here at 10 degrees off camera um, but I was gonna use 15 degree but it looked a little steep so I'm gonna go back to 10 here and all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go get my square I'm just gonna square this off to the to the lay piece and then I can just draw my line um, and I can just simply you know template to the other one and I'll just evenly space them out for the three shelves I have and uh, screw them together and we'll just kind of go from there.
So I decided it's probably going to be a better safer bet if we just switch over to trim head screws. These ones are inch and five eighths. Um, some reason I don't have anything shorter right now. That's weird. Anyways, let me go find a little trim head square bit for this real quick. So easy. There we go. Yep, do that. Okay, so. that and I think after this we'll get rid of all this sharp pokey stuff on here and uh, maybe we'll put some shine juice on it I think I'm gonna Maybe put, I'm going to sand some of the burrs off this. 
just a little bit, not too much. I don't want to ruin it, but all the sharp stuff that can stab people, get all that off. And then I might give it some shine juice here and just see what it looks like. After that, that's it. button to give me a thumbs up that would really help channel out my name is ryan harker thanks for watching